The moment we hear the word Bali, the first thing that comes to our mind are those incredible posts on Instagram. Jaw-dropping swings, adorable photo spots, white sandy beaches, beautiful villas and mesmerizing rice terraces. Sure, it feels like an exotic vacation you can only dream of going. But what if I tell you that Bali is in fact one of the cheapest international destinations you can visit? You might be bombarded with a lot of questions right now. Like where is Bali? How to reach Bali? Where to stay? How to travel? Places to visit in Bali? Where to eat? Will I get a vegetarian food? What will be the total budget? When is a good time to visit Bali? What activities can I do? Is it really worth visiting Bali or is it just a hype? If you have all these questions and ton of other questions running through your mind, then this video will answer all of them. Hey guys, welcome back to Secret Cubes and this is Sagar. To make it simple, I have divided this video into 15 sections, each covering detailed information you need to know. Let's dive deep into our list of 15 things to know before visiting Bali. Bali is situated in Indonesia. It's not a city or a country, but it's an island. Indonesia has more than 17,000 islands, among which Bali is one of the most popular one. Bali is relatively a small island. It is just 85 km in length and 135 km in width. But the surprising thing is that such a wide range of tourist attractions are packed in such a tiny space. We can find crystal clear beaches to thick forests and from incredible waterfalls to volcanic mountains. That's the reason why Bali has become one of the hottest destinations for people across the globe. Another reason why Bali has got so much of popularity is because of Instagram. The photos posted on Instagram are just wow. After visiting Bali, I can confirm that Bali is indeed worth the hype. And in fact, it's even more beautiful than what you see in those photos. When you travel outside India, there will be always excitement and fear about the culture of that particular country. But with Bali, you never have to worry. Even though Indonesia is a Muslim dominant country, Bali is a Hindu dominant island. There is more than 80% is Hindu population in Bali. That's why it exactly feels like India. People in Bali do worship Lord Ganesha, Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu. Even though the religion is the same, the tradition and practices differ. That's why Bali feels so much relatable, yet so much different, especially for Indians. Balinese people are very sweet, kind and helpful. You will see their hospitality throughout your stay in Bali. But as the saying goes, Chan mein bhi daag hota hai. I heard stories of many people getting scammed in Bali. These scams are pretty common in places like Kuta and Seminyak. Bali has a tropical climate, warm and humid all year round. Bali has just two seasons, dry season and wet season. There is no winter season as such in Bali. The rainy season is from November to March and the dry season is from April to October. The best time to visit Bali is between June to September. During this time, the weather will be pleasant. It will not be too sunny and the humidity would be bearable. July and August are the peak season in Bali as they are the driest time of the year. Flights, hotels and activities would be the costliest during these two months. Apart from these months, the last week of December and the first week of January are also considered peak season because of the Christmas holidays. Visiting Bali in the month of May and October is also a good idea as these two months are considered off-season hence the prices would be much cheaper during this time. Make sure not to visit Bali during rainy season as you won't be able to explore anything due to heavy rains. Now that you have learned so much about Bali, it's time to go there. But how? Bali has an airport called Nagurarai International Airport situated in a city called Denpasar. Even though Bali is not very far from India, the journey is going to be tiresome as there are no direct flights from India. You will have to take a connecting flight to reach Bali. The layover airport can differ based on the flight, but Kuala Lumpur Airport in Malaysia and Changi Airport in Singapore are the most common ones. The layover time could be anywhere between 4 hours to 8 hours. We took Malaysia layover but regretted it as the airport was very boring. It made layover time even more frustrating. On the other hand, Singapore airport is much better. You can do a lot of activity during layover time. So if you have an option to choose between the two, then go for Singapore layover. Unlike other airports, Bali airport looks totally different. You will get Bali vibes the moment you land here. Bali offers visa on arrival for tourists from 86 countries and India is one of them. 
This visa on arrival is given for 30 days, but you can extend it to another 30 days if you decide to stay longer. The visa on arrival would cost $35 and you have to directly pay it when you arrive in Bali. As for the documents, you will need a passport with at least 6 months validity, a return flight ticket and vaccination certificates. They may also ask for hotel confirmation and travel insurance with a minimum coverage of 50,000 USD. You will also need to fill a custom declaration form before you enter Bali. If you are travelling in a group, only one person needs to fill this form. You can either fill it out at the airport or fill it online in advance to save the time. You will also need to install an app called Peduli Lindungi. This is nothing but an Indonesian version of Aarogya Setu app. Just install this app and sign up when you are in India itself. Bali offers a wide variety of places to see including beaches, temples, mountains, waterfalls and photo spots. If you are staying in Bali for a limited time, then ask yourself what you like to see and shortlist the places as per your choice. The names of the places in Bali can be confusing, difficult to remember and a lot more difficult to pronounce. So make sure to take a pen and paper and write it down. To make it simple to understand, I have divided Bali into 6 parts. The first one is the southern Bali, that's where the airport is located. South Bali has a lot of beaches, day clubs, beach clubs and more. Garuda Vishnu Cultural Park, Uluwatu Temple, Suluban Beach, Tanalot and Pasut Beach are some of the popular attractions here. Central Bali on the other hand is the cultural capital of Bali. You will find amazing temples, mesmerizing waterfalls, beautiful rice terraces and a lot of photo spots here. Ubud is the main city here around which all the attractions are located. Goa Gaja, Sacred Monkey Forest, Tegalalang Rice Terrace, Ubud Palace, Saraswati Temple, Kirta Empul, Tibumana Waterfalls, Kantalumpa Waterfalls and Jatiluye Rice Terraces are some of the popular attractions. North Bali has hidden waterfalls, temples and mountains. Ulundanu Temple, Andhara Gate, Banimala Waterfalls and volcanic mountain called Mount Batur are popular attractions here. East Bali has famous Instagram spots like Lempyang Temple, also called the Gateway of Heaven, Lahangan Suite, Tirtha Ganga and Baisaki Temple. Apparently, West Bali doesn't have well-known tourist attractions. On the southeast coast of Bali, there are three islands called Nusa Islands. Nusa Peneda is the biggest island among these three and it is the most popular one. Nusa Peneda has the most beautiful attractions like Kelingang Beach, Angels Billibong, Broken Beach and Diamond Beach. Apart from these places, there are three more islands called Gili Islands. This is called the Pate Island of Indonesia. Even though these islands are very small, they are very beautiful. To keep this video shorter, I will not go in detail about these places, but I will be making another dedicated video about places to visit in Bali soon. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit on the bell icon not to miss that. Stays in Bali are pretty cheap as compared to India. In places like Kuta, you can easily get a 4 star stay for around 1500 rupees per night. Yes, it's that cheap. And if you want a private villa, then you can easily get a good one for around 3000 rupees per night. If you're looking at a mid-range or luxury properties, then there are plenty of options in that category as well. Kuta, Seminyak, Chengu and Ubud are the places where most people prefer to stay and you get a plenty of options in these cities. If you are staying in Bali for more than 5 days, then I would suggest you to stay in South Bali for some days and in Ubud for other days. Traffic in Bali is quite bad due to narrow roads. Staying in different places would help you reach tourist attractions in less time. Ubud has very beautiful villas next to paddy fields. So it's a good idea to stay in a regular hotel in South Bali and stay in an exotic villas in Ubud. I'll drop a link to some of the recommended stays in the description box below. Make sure to check it out. Bali is a paradise for non-vegetarians. You can try your hands on a variety of seafoods. But if you are a vegetarian, then don't worry, you will still find something to survive. There are two famous local dishes in Bali, nasi goreng and mee goreng. Nasi means rice and mee means noodles. So you basically have fried rice and noodles on the menu. You can ask them to add eggs if you want to. These two dishes were always available no matter where you go whether it's a small restaurant or a big one. Apart from nasi goreng and mee goreng, fruit balls are also quite famous in Bali. You can have fruit balls for breakfast. They are not only delicious but also very healthy. There are some Indian restaurants in Bali. We did visit one of them called Queen's Tandoor. 
it was recommended by many people but to be frank we didn't like the taste of the food and it was too expensive i usually don't make a food vlogs on this channel but let me know if i should make a dedicated video on the places to eat in bali in the comment section below bali doesn't have any public transport so there are only two options to choose from you can either hire a cab or rent a scooter if you are with a family or can't ride a two wheeler then the choice is obvious you can hire a cab for the day but if you have a freedom to ride a two wheeler then i highly recommend you to rent a scooter it's not only the cheapest option but also the most convenient one the traffic in bali can get crazy at times so having a two wheeler would be very helpful in navigating through the traffic you can find the scooter rentals in every corner of the city but if you are looking for a reliable service then you can book through kluk we booked a two wheeler for our entire duration on this app they gave a pick up and drop facility from our hotel even though the prices were higher on this app it was very convenient and hassle free one question that you may ask is whether the indian driving license will work in bali the answer is both yes and no you can easily get a bike rental with an indian license you will see very less traffic police throughout bali they will never stop you to check for a license unless and until you break any traffic rules make sure to wear helmet all the time and follow traffic rules for times when you want to book a shorter distance like going from hotel to airport or other places you can just use gojek or grab they are like ola and uber the prices are very less and you get really nice cars you will need internet connectivity when in bali All the hotels and restaurants will have free Wi-Fi. But if you want connectivity on the go, then you will have to buy a SIM card. Getting a SIM card in Bali is very easy. It can cost around 500 rupees for 18 GB data plan. These SIM cards would be data only. You will not be able to make any calls, but you will be able to receive messages. This is helpful when you need OTP to sign up for the apps like Gojek and Grab. Telkom Cell is the most reliable service operator in Bali. The network was available at every corner of Bali including Nusa Penida. Avoid buying SIM cards at the airport as it is very expensive there. You can buy it outside the airport or near Kuta or Seminyak market. We booked a SIM card through Kluk. It was not only reasonably priced but also we got it delivered at the airport itself. It was so much helpful at the moment that we could sign up on Gojek and book a cab. One thing to note here is that the SIM card would be tied to a particular IMEA number. so you will not be able to use the sim card on any other phone the local currency in bali is called indonesian rupiah or idr in short one indian rupee is equivalent to roughly 185 indonesian rupiah that means if you exchange 55000 indian rupees then you are a crore pati in indonesia but 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 we'll also spend on the same scale For example, a taxi ride from airport to hotel in Kuta can cost around 90,000 Indonesian rupiah or an average meal can cost around 60,000 Indonesian rupiah. Now that you know about IDR, the next question is converting from Indian rupees to Indonesian rupiah. There are two ways to do it. The first and less efficient way is to convert directly from INR to IDR. The downside of this method is we'll get very poor rates. The second and better way is to convert from INR to USD in India. and when you reach bali you can convert from usd to idr effectively you will get a better conversion this way there is a huge possibility of scams when you try to get your money exchanged in bali always exchange your money in an authorized money exchange center only if you have an indian card with international transaction enabled then you can easily withdraw money at any atm in bali but the banks will charge a lot of fee for that the recommendation is to carry sufficient cash and keep the card for emergency Bali is a paradise for shopping. You get very beautiful handcrafted products here. There are so many street shopping options available which you are going to love it. Even though you can find the market throughout Bali, shops in Ubud are the cheapest. When you're shopping, feel free to bargain. Usually the shopkeepers would quote 3 to 4 times the cost of the product. If you don't have much time, patience or skills to bargain, then I suggest you to check out Krishna Ole Ole. It's a pretty big mall just like Big Bazaar. There are so many varieties of products here. and the prices are also reasonable luckily we visited this place on the first day itself and noted on all the prices and when we were in ubud these prices helped us to bargain better one question that many people have been asking us is whether we went through any package the answer is no we planned everything by ourselves we researched a lot and took the risk of exploring on our own was it worth it 
definitely yes. We had the freedom to stop wherever and whenever we wanted. There is so much of information available on the internet that you can easily plan a Bali trip independently. But if you are coming here with family or kids, then a tour package would make more sense. Tour packages would be more comfortable and everything would be taken care of. Make sure to research a bit and design your own itinerary. You can ask them to include the places you want to go instead of them suggesting the places to visit. Apart from sightseeing, there are many activities you can do in Bali. One of the popular activity is Mount Pato Trek. I have covered more about Mount Pato Trek in a separate video. Click on the i button above to check that. If you are not into trekking, then you can go for water sports activities like banana boat, parasailing and jet skiing. But these activities you can find in India also. What you will not get in India are snorkeling and scuba diving. The marine life in this ocean is very beautiful. It's worth trying scuba diving and snorkeling in these oceans. You can find the best diving spots in Nusa Penida and Gili Islands. You can see turtles and manta rays which is once a lifetime experience. The expenses can vary depending on how you'd like to explore Bali, where you want to stay and how many days you would spend in Bali. For us, it costed around 80,000 rupees per person including everything for 10 days. Let's see the breakup now. The round trip flight can cost around 40,000 rupees per person. The visa on arrival is 3,500 rupees. On an average, the food would cost around 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per day. You have to pay entrance everywhere, even for temples and waterfalls. So that itself would be close to 5,000 rupees. And the stay would cost around 1,000 rupees. If you like to do scuba, it will cost 7,000 rupees. Nusa Penida day tour would be around 4,000 rupees and Mount Bato trek will cost another 4,000 rupees. So if you sum it up, it can range from 80,000 rupees to 90,000 rupees per person. This is just a high level idea of the budget. The exact expenses may vary. That was everything you needed to know before visiting Bali. Let me know if you have any question in the comment section below. Share this video with the ones you are planning to visit Bali. I'm making more videos on Bali, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful, then hit on that like button. You can watch this video on the left to know more about places to visit in Bali. See you in my next video. Until then, keep traveling.